Shalom, and I welcome to GMS Lashon Kodash. Um, today's topic is um, a brief history on the origins of the uh, Hebrew language and the characters. Um, so, you know, I know some brothers out there have had questions about, you know, the Hebrew letters and which one should we use. Should we use the Assyrian script, as you see up here in black, or should we use the, um, the Paleo Hebrew or the Lashon Kodash, as you see here? Well, pretty much we use both, you know, we pretty much use both and we uh, pronounce this Aramaic as we would the ancient. You know, that's that's just, that's just the deal with us because most Torahs, as you see out there, are all written in the Assyrian, most of them are written in Assyrian script, you know. And if you can get the uh, ancient, ancient, that's good too, you know, but we mainly use this because that's, that's what the, main, the Torahs are mainly um, that are out there are written in, this Arama Ar Aramaic. So what I have here is I just have a chart of all the Hebrew characters in the Aramaic and also in the uh, Lashwan Kodash, as you see here. <clears throat> and in between both of them, I have the pronunciation of each letter. All right. Like this character here is the Assyrian A, and this is the uh, uh, Lashwan Kodash A. Okay. This is Ba, Ba. Okay. All the way down, as you can see it. And, um... What, like I said to you brothers, you know, the best thing for you to do is learn the characters, learn the pronunciation of them, and then when you read it, you can uh, sound each word out as you read reading through um, the different chapters in the Torah. All right. Um, I'm not really going to go too deep into this, you know, and going because there's a video on uh, GMS Lashwan Kodash that goes into each of the pronunciations and the final lands, you know, uh, the different final lands of the uh, Syrian script, which you don't have <clears throat> in the um, Paleo Hebrew or the Lashon Kodash. Okay, but what I really, uh, what I, what I, what I want to do is I want to go into the uh, scriptures and I want to give you um, the uh, origins um, of the Hebrew language, uh, going back to Adam, you know, going uh, uh, up. From Adam to the time of Noah and his three sons, and um, go through that the scriptures on on a brief history, and then um, afterwards, maybe in a part two, I can go and dig up some um, some more stuff and show you some of the um, some of the origins and some of the, you know stuff that that these uh, so-called scholars and researchers out there have put together to show where the uh, Hebrew language came from. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the book of uh, Genesis, the second chapter, and uh, the 15th verse, because when the Most High created man and beast and all that, he named Adam, his name Adam, which the term or the name Adam was basically a people, but there was an actual Adam that the Lord named, you know, which was the man Adam, you know, which you brothers out there has been watching <clears throat> for the longest and have been watching especially recently uh, that know about reincarnation know that Adam and Yahweh Shai are the same person all right so now when the Most High set up Adam he set up Adam to to watch over the Garden of Eden you know to, to you know maintain you know not maintain as far as working but as far as you know to look over it you know to have dominion over the beasts over the uh, over the creeping things over the birds and over the fowls of the air and all of that so when he set up Adam, he put those animals and those creeping things and everything in his sight, whatever, whatever, whatever was there, the Lord just put it in, 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 in the sight of Adam to see what Adam would call these things. And whatever Adam called those things, that was the name of them. So that was the beginning of naming everything. And that's where the actual Hebrew alphabet comes from, from the naming, from all the different Hebrew names or the Lashwan Kodash names that Adam gave to these things. <clears throat> For instance, it says here, And the Lord power took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord power commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord power said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord power formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. See? So the Lord brought them to him to see what Adam would call these animals. 
and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So this was before the actual letters were actually etched in stone or written down in parchment. You know, so Adam named all of these things. That's why when you look at the Hebrew language, which, which will, uh, and I'll show you in a few minutes, when you look at the Hebrew language or the characters, each character represents a, a, um, a certain thing, whether it be an animal, whether it be a, a house, or whether it be a hook, or whether, whatever it be. It represents something. So each symbol or each uh, um, thing, whether it was animal or whatever, had a symbol. And that symbol was what became known as a Hebrew character. All right? And like I said, I'll show you that in a moment. So it says, and, um, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So this is the origins of where the actual Hebrew language started from. But remember, it was it was oral at, at that time. There was nothing like written down or etched down in, in a stone as of, as of yet. All right. So now the next scripture is the uh, book of Genesis, the 10th chapter and the 21st verse, because the, the language had a name and the name of the language was Ibar. Now, the word or the term Ibar comes from the name of uh, Salah's son, Eber, which means from the past. Why? Because in the, he kept the language of the past. Everybody else at this time, when you look at the uh, three sons of Noah and their families in Genesis the 10th chapter, all these people, including Noah and their wives and everything, they all spoke Hebrew. You know, but through this child here, Eber, that's where the actual line of the Hebrew or the Hebrew of the Hebrews, as uh, uh, the Apostle Paul said, was going to be kept through that line. All right. It says, unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber. Now notice it says, it's, it mentions Shem, and it mentions the father of all the children of Eber. Now was Shem the father of Eber? No. Let's find out. It says, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, these are Shem's sons, Elam and Asher and Aphaxad and Lud and Aram. So Shem, Elam had, I'm sorry, Shem had five sons. Eber wasn't one of his sons. Eber was his grandson. But the reason why it says unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the reason why it called him the father of the children of Eber was because through that line, that's where the, the Hebrew language and that, that lineage of the chosen that um, promised to the fathers was going to be kept. Right? So I'm going to read it again. Unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, Ibar, from the past, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, and Aphaxad, and Lud, and Aram. So Shem was actually the grandfather of Eber. And it says, And the children of Aram, Uz, and Hul, and Giver, and Mash. And Aphaxad begot Salah, and Salah begot Eber. Well, actually, he was a great-grandfather of Eber. Shem was a great-grandfather of Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of the one Peleg was Peleg. For in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Jotham. So when Eber was born, then his son Peleg was born, or Palag in the Hebrew. That's the reason why he was called Palag, which goes back to a term uh, um, uh, in Latin called Nomen Omen, or name prediction. The reason why he was called that was because when he was born at that time, that was when the Lord was getting ready to separate all the nations. Because for, from this point on, that's when the chosen line or the chosen lineage was going to be formed. It was going to be brought to, you know, together. It was going to be made separate from all these other people that were inhabiting the earth at that time. All right? So from there, let's go to Genesis, the 11th chapter, and the first verse. It says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And what was that one language and that one speech? It was the language of Hebrew. Or the Lashwan Kodash, as you see here. This language here. But back then, it was oral. You know, and then eventually in the process of time, these nations that spoke uh, this language and that, that, that had a variation of it, they started etching down and writing certain letters down. You know, and then eventually when, when our language became written, 
you know, there was other languages that were kind of similar to it. Why? Because that was the original language. But what happened was we didn't write our language down at this time. Remember, everything was done orally. Okay, so this is the actual language that was being spoken of back then. So it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord come down, came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. See, what was that one language? The Lashuan Kodash, you know, or as the so-called scholars call it, the Paleo-Hebrew. It says, And this they began to do, and now nothing will be strength will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go go to, let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So that one language that was being spoken back then, the Lord himself, Yahweh, he confounded that language back then. And, there, this, there were, and the reason why it was called Babylon or confusion was because that one language was, was, uh, was uh, split up and made into many different languages. Same thing here in America. Here in America, you have, it's called, this, America is known as Babylon the Great for many reasons. But one of the reasons, too, it's called Babylon is because you have all, it's a melting pot. You have all nations here that speak all different forms and types of languages, have all different types of alphabets and all that. But all these alphabets and languages all go back to one source, and that's the ancient Hebrew. Okay? So now here, this is what they call the Proto-Hebrew script. Now the word Proto means first, or the first Hebrew script. It says, this is also called early Aramaic script. The key extant example is the Moabite stone. Now, the Moabite stone, those of you that have seen the Moabite stone, it has actual Hebrew writing on it, you know? The actual Hebrew that, that we spoke back then, because the Moabites are a Hebrew family, and they spoke the same language we did at one time. It says, uh, this was the Hebrew uh, used by the Jewish nation up to the Babylonian exile, uh, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the 6th century. Okay, now, just get to the point. These are all the characters here. This is A, Ba, Ga, Da, Ha, Wa, Za, Cha, Ta, Ya, Ka, and all the way down to Tha. And now if you notice underneath it is what? They, they got here a left, but it's really a lap. Okay? Matter of fact, let me pull this up real quick. Bear with me one second. It's really a lap. They say a left, but it's really a lap. As you can see here, let me bring it back up. See, and this is a cattle head. All right. If you turn this, if you rotate it to the left and have this point pointing down, that'll be the head of a cattle. All right. Those of you that, that, that live up in the East Coast, um, I don't know if there's any uh, of these uh, American steakhouses anywhere around the rest of the country, but if you notice when you when you look at American steakhouse, they have the head of a cattle and it looks just like this, you know. Then you have bet they got here bet or bet, which is really, which is really, bayath, which the word bayath means house, and the word alap means cattle. Or it could be the number 1,000, you know, because everything back then was rounded off. You know, you could have 1,010 cattle, but then you still considered 1,000 cattle. Or you could have 920 cattle, it would still be considered 1,000 cattle. All right, so a lap is cattle or 1,000, but yath is house. All right, now all of these have uh, different uh, uh, characters and different uh, names and uh 
things that they represent, you know, but some of them, you know, I'm not really sure of, you know, what, um, what they are because, you know, the list that we got was partial. I mean, you know, you have some information out there that, that, uh, they go into all of them, you know, saying it means this, it means that. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I haven't delved into that, you know, I mean, I've looked up, you know, certain things in the past, but I, you know, I just pretty much dealt with, with what I, what I had at the time, you know, and we, and it was incomplete. And like the scriptures say, you know, we prophesy in part. And we know in part, so we prophesy in part, you know. So I just gave you just a couple of them, just so you could see. Now, sometimes you see, you may see brothers use this when they go into the Hebrew and break things down in the Hebrew, or sometimes you'll see them go into this uh, Assyrian script, you know. And I, I go into this Assyrian script a lot. The reason why, or the Syrian script a lot, or Aramean, the reason why is because, like I told you before. This is what the, the Torahs you have out there are, um, have in them. And that's what you're going to, you know, get used to. You know, I mean, that's what you're going to read in there if you get the, the uh, Torahs of today. And that's why, you know, I usually stay on this. But it's, a, it's very important that you brothers do learn this because this is our language here. You know, this was a language that we, we spoke when we were in captivity under the Assyrians. You know, but this right here is, is our language. So you got to learn both. You know, but when we, when I, what, I, what I do is I use these characters and I transliterate them into the pronunciation of the Lashawan Kodash. Okay, so your brothers can understand. You know, so I'm going to end the lesson there. I just wanted to do like a quick brief, a uh, little thing on, 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 uh, on the origins of the Hebrew language so you could get like an idea. You know, um, you know I, I got to do a little more research to find a few more other things to kind of put a, a something else, you know, a, a little extra on there. Just to show you, because they got here, they have like, you know, the Proto-Hebrew script, but above it they have the Proto-Canaanite pictographs, the Phoenician script, you know, which all of these basically are from the Hebrew, you know. But at one point, when we when uh, it was first started through Adam, there was, there was uh, as far as, as, as we know right now, there were no written records going back that far, you know. I mean, maybe they wrote some stuff down, and, you know, we don't know, but... As it stands now, you know, there were no written records from the time of Adam, you know, and these other languages that came afterwards, that just shows that, that all these people were speaking the same language. That's why if you look through here, it's the same thing, the cattle, the house, uh, gamel or uh, gamar, which is camel, the let or dalath, which is door, you know, so they all have the same or similar symbols. All right, so with that, you know, I hope you brothers learned something, and to the next time, I say shalom.